Hey, what's up, Reefers? Today is going to be a really busy day because today we're going to do a full spectrum water test on the 135 gallon tank. So far, I know the salinity, I know the temperature, and I know the alkalinity, but I have not tested any of the other parameters because the tank just came out of cycle. Now that I started dosing, I want to make sure that I have a handle of all the other parameters and where it's sitting at right now. These are not all the test kits I have, I have more, but these are the ones I'll be using today. First of all, to help me with the salinity, I'm going to use the HANA handheld salinity tester. This is through conductive testing, and I'll verify the result with the VG uh, refractometer. And this is, the, dude, this is expensive, it's like hundreds of dollars. Except for temperature. I'm gonna get a temperature reading from here, but I'm also gonna use a handheld heat gun just to kind of confirm it. And following these, I'm gonna double check my pH reading from the pros by using the uh, HANA handheld pH checker as well. Next up for alkalinity, I'm gonna use the HANA's um, alkalinity handheld checker. In terms of handheld alkalinity checking, this is kind of like the gold standards. Now, if this is not obvious, I'm a big fan of HANA, but the calcium kits is a little bit more cumbersome compared to the other test kits, so I don't use it that often. And once we got alkalinity, calcium, next up, magnesium. For magnesium, I'm using a siliford, has been tried and true. So with the big three alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium tested, I'm going to test my nutrient level as well. So we're going to start out with the NIOS nitrate test. This is really easy to use and uh, the color differences is easy enough to tell apart. Not like a lot of other test kit that's really difficult to see. And we'll follow up by the HANA's phosphate low level handheld test kit to see where the phosphate level is. So as you can see, we got a full schedule of testing ahead of us. Since I've done a video with uh, water testing before, I'm not going to bore you guys with all the little details again. So we're just going to cut right to the results. First thing I want to point out is that the app I'm using right now is called Aquariumate. I've been using it to track my value, but I feel like the interface has not changed in a long time and it may not be as intuitive. So if you guys have any uh, recommendations on mobile app that can help me track parameters, please let me know. Now with that said, let's dive right into it. Two weeks later. All right, Reverse, here comes the fun parts. We are going to interpret the data that we got today. And uh, the last time I did a food test was two weeks ago. So we're going to do a quick comparison and then see the difference. The first parameter we're going to look at is the salinity. And that's really important because like the salinity kind of dictates all the other parameters. Uh, so if it's off, everything else is going to be off. So I try to keep this salinity as close to 45 PPT as possible. And to verify this, I use the HANA's handheld salinity tester as well as the VG refractometers. And I love both of those tools. Second one temperature is pretty straightforward. I keep my tank at 78 and it has been pretty consistent for the last two weeks. And this value has been verified by the GHL Mini's uh, temperature probe as well as the pH uh, handheld meter from HANA. pH I actually struggle a little bit because the different sensor is telling me different value. Um, ultimately, I decided to go with the Alcatronics pH value because I feel like it sits between the GHL Mini's pH probe and the uh, HANA handheld pH uh, pH tester. A pH of 7.57 feels quite low, uh, but at the same time, I'm not super confident in terms of the actual pH value. So I need to find um, <laughs> a fourth way to validate this number. I have recalibrated the pH probe uh, right after the second test uh, because I'm supposed to recalibrate the Algotronic um, the first week and then the second week again. So I may do it again just to double check the values. Uh, but w when the pH probe is submerged in the, I think it's like the seven and either the four, the 10 standard, they, they were reading correctly. So I feel like uh, pH may actually be somewhere around there. I'm not sure, but again, um, as long as the pH is kind of within range and uh, the trends is not swinging too much, I'm not going to stress over the actual number. Uh, but for now, it is 7.57 from the electronic handheld. I think it's like 7.4 something, and the um, the GHL Mini is actually showing 7.8 ish. So I feel like it's somewhere around there. But we'll keep an eye on it and I'll double check. So in terms of alkalinity reading, I actually have a lot of confidence in the um, HANA alkalinity checker. So I'm using the HANA's value uh, of 8.8. .8. Uh, on Alcatronic, it's actually showing something a little bit different. Yep, it's uh, 9.43 at the moment. Looking at the trend line, the trending is actually okay. Uh, it means that the consistency is there within the test itself. Meaning that within Alcatronic, the test is consistent. But between Alcatronic and between HANA, there's discrepancy. Now I wonder if it has something to do with the uh, lower pH value because I really don't think my tank is sitting at 7.57 of 7.6 pH. Um, I feel like it's probably somewhere between here or it could be 7.8-ish that the GHL, GHL Mini is showing. I feel like as long as the test within the test kit or the test unit itself is consistent, 
and repeatable. I feel like it is okay. Um, it would be nice to know the actual value, so I may send out an ICP test at some point. However, uh, there's problem with ICP tests as well. Between the HANA test kit and the Electronic, because I've used the HANA so much longer, I tend to lean a little bit more towards HANA. That's why I've recorded the HANA test kit's um, uh, value of 8.8 .8 here. One thing I could do with the Electronic is that I could actually set the baseline, meaning that if I trust the HANA test kit um, and it is accurate in my opinion, which is 8.8, .8, I could actually set the Electronic to read whatever it has right now as 8.8 .8 and adjust accordingly. But I'm gonna watch it a little bit more, uh, make sure to triple, quadruple check with the HANA test kit as well as Electronic to make sure the deviation is the set amount so far it seems to be because they're both really consistent. Uh, so I may just adjust it so that Electronic is reading 8.8 .8 with whatever it is doing right now. Uh, I may have to tweak it again once the unit get broken in a little bit more and I've remixed the reagent, but we'll go from there. Moving on to magnesium, I have a Cellifer kit. Uh, I'm not super confident in it, but that's all I got. Uh, and as you can see, within the two weeks, it has jumped from 1390 ppm all the way to 15, I'm not even sure if it's 1540. 1500 is highest. Uh, based on the color turn, it's slowly turning, but not quite. I'm guessing it's gonna be sitting at around 1540. I'm guessing maybe it's because I'm dosing the ATI Essential Coral Pro, and nothing is really consuming the uh, magnesium, so it got bumped up. But it was a pretty large amount, it was a pretty big jump, just from dosing, I think I'm dosing like five milliliter. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll need to double check this value as well. But at the moment, 1540, which is kinda high. And then we get to the fun parts, calcium. Uh, calcium test kits, I have two. I have the Hannah's and I have the Cell I obviously love Hannah, but the calcium test kit has multiple steps that require pretty precise uh, measurements. So sometimes I question whether I'm doing it right, and oftentimes I will double check with the Cellifert's test kits. In this case though, I feel like I'm doing it right, but again, I'm getting slightly different readings. Uh, the reading of 412 is actually from the Hannah calcium test kits. And in the Cellifert, I'm getting a 475, if I remember correctly. And this deviation is once again, consistent two weeks ago when I was doing uh, the four the 455 is actually from Hannah test kit and from uh, Silifert I was once again getting like 480 some ish I think so um, the week to week swings it is consistent within the test kit itself but between the different brands there is a deviation so in this case um, I am actually leaning it's a little bit more towards Hannah test kits um, because I've used the calcium test kit from Hannah a little bit longer than the Cellifert's. I got the Cellifert's a while back just to double check the value because um, I'm getting comments saying that the Hannah calcium test kit is not accurate, etc., etc. So I want to double check uh, once in a while just to make sure. But I find that within the test kit itself, it is consistently repeatable. Um, so in this case, I'm a little bit more confident in the Hannah one. Um, so I'm using the Hannah's value of 412 here. And it's interesting, within two weeks, it dropped about 40 ppm. Uh, which I can guess why, because the Petco $50 clam moved back into the uh, this tank roughly two weeks ago. So it kind of makes sense. All right, finally, let's take a look at the nitrate and phosphate. And these two value, it's uh, something I discovered recently that is actually really important for corals as well. Uh, in the past, I shoot for uh, like zero and zero, and that's uh, actually terrible for corals. Corals do need something in the water to grow. Um, I'm looking at nitrate of four and a phosphate of 0.09. Nitrate is, um, is good. Phosphate went up a little bit and I know exactly why. I have been feeding my new sun coral as well as the uh, Fatendro, Space Invader, etc. like a madman. I've been dosing the tank with like LLS, Reef Frenzy, um, Reef Nutrition, Liquid Products, Reef Roy's, etc. etc. Um, the small feeding every other day, a big feeding every three or four days. So I've been dumping a lot of phosphate into the water, which is fine. I personally like a quote unquote dirtier or more nutrient rich tank. So this is totally fine. So I'm sure you see the problem now. Different brand of test kits is telling me different values and they're all accurate and repeatable within that test. Who do you trust? And to be completely honest with you, I honestly don't know. I mean, even if I send out ICP tests to different ICP testing centers, they'll probably come back with different values as well. And I believe there's a YouTuber that actually did a test on this as well. I sent out um, different ICP tests from to different companies and compared the results. And the result was that, yeah, they are not all the same. And this is actually something that I internalized after reading it so often online. People kept saying that the actual number does not matter. 
consistency is key. Meaning that as long as the parameters are within range of what is acceptable, as long as there's no big swings, hey, your tank's probably okay. Now, of course, if your tank has cycled, you're trying to down in the dosing, getting all the parameters uh, up to speed, or ideally, you'll want to hit that sweet spot of where you want your tank to be. But after using all these test kits, uh, what I learned is that uh, it's kind of hard to tell who's right and who's wrong. So if I have multiple test kits that test the same parameters that falls around the same range, I try to pick the test kits that's easiest to use and I kind of stick with that. Because I'm sure you've read online already, the corals behind us, they're so adaptable to the environment, you just gotta give them a chance and keep your environment stable. And that is the key here. Personally, as long as the value is within range, I feel like it's so much more important to see the trend and to make sure the test is repeatable, meaning the test is accurate within itself than no the actual value because once again I'm not sure what the actual value is different tests are telling me different things personally with the electronic I may have fudged it up at some point maybe it's the second batch of reagent I have not mixed properly I'll have to double check because before I change out the reagent and recalibrated all the probes the measurement is actually spot on with the Hannah's alkalinity checker so once the reagent runs out this time, I'm gonna redo all the plumbing and stuff like that. But for now, I'm just gonna set the baseline to match the Hannah's alkalinity checker. The only thing I need to keep in mind is that the next time I redo the reagent, assuming that there was an issue and I corrected it, I have to kind of undo the baseline. Otherwise, everything's gonna be off by that offset. But again, I'm assuming the Hannah checker is more accurate at this point, um, simply because the electronic is totally new to me and things may be breaking in, or I may have fudged up the reagent mixing. What I can say is that all the test kits I've used so far has been really consistent within its own brand. Knowing the precise value is ideal and I hope we get to that stage at some point. But for now, totally happy of knowing the trend and knowing that it is at least concise within that and then keep a stable parameters. Whew, that was a long video, guys. I have a question for you guys. Uh, there are certain test kits that kind of jump out to me being really easy to use and precise, at least in terms of repeatable. Uh, for example, the Hannah's alkalinity checker. I think there's no argument that it's one of the fantastic test kit. And like nitrate, the Niles nitrate is uh, simple to use and pretty repeatable. Are there certain test kit that really jumps out to you as being fantastic uh, in your experience? If so, leave it in the comment below. With that said, I'll see you guys next Sunday at 12 p.m. Shop. Bye. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Smokey. Uh, you may know me as Inappropriate Reefer. Welcome.